All right, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how Elon Musk is bringing high-speed internet to the entire world and how scientists are revolutionizing drug development with virtual drugs and how big data can save thousands from dying of malaria. And these are some examples of how computer scientists and programmers can really help and have an impact. Over the past 200 years, the average life expectancy has globally gone from less than 30 years old to above 72 years of age. And there are many factors that play a role in explaining this, but one important reason is that our healthcare and technology has improved dramatically. One reason that the life expectancy of the average person is increasing constantly is the fact that we can actually treat now a lot of the diseases that once upon a time would have been fatal. But the problem with that is that we've solved a lot of the easier diseases and we're just moving up the hierarchy of more complex diseases. And as we're doing that, the solutions to solving or curing something like cancer and other types of diseases is just a lot more complex and is a lot more difficult to actually do. According to an article from Nature last year, the average cost of making a new drug or medicine is around two to three billion dollars. And the average development time is often more than 10 years. And one of the possible solutions to this problem is presented by the first project that we're going to look at, which is called virtual screening. This is a new way to use advanced computer simulations to test the drugs virtually, thus reducing the amount of hours and money that otherwise would have to be spent in the lab. And to understand the concept, we must understand the general concept of how drugs are developed. To fight some virus, chemical or bacteria, the first step is to understand how it physically looks. If we can determine the composition, or at least part of the composition, then we can apply different drugs to that and try to destroy the virus or whatever disease we're trying to destroy. And drug development is in general a lot about trial and error, figuring out what works against the disease and what doesn't. And then it's also important that the drug, at least primarily, only affects the disease and doesn't kill the person that we try to cure, because then it's all kind of for nothing. One really important phase of developing these drugs is the drug screening. And essentially what you do is you identify, or once you've identified uh, what the disease is, you just apply a lot of different chemicals to it. Essentially just try anything that you have and see what happens, see what works. But this is a very inefficient process because it's very time consuming and also very costly to do. This is where the virtual screening comes into the picture. Scientists across the world are working to refine simulation tools to do the best possible virtual drug screening. What you do is that you load the compound, or maybe just a part of it, if it's some huge bacteria. Then you start testing. What if we apply drug A, B, or C to this disease? Does it affect it? And in this way, scientists can actually relatively quickly test thousands of different known drugs and chemicals against this disease and relatively fast obtain, like, a result of the top 10 or top 100 potential drugs that might actually work against this disease. These drugs are then tested clinically in the lab to confirm that the simulation was correct. And these simulations can then save companies millions of dollars and speed up the drug development process. And the lab personnel can then focus on this manual labor of actually testing the drugs that have the highest potential instead of wasting a lot of time and a lot of resources on things that have a very low probability of actually working against the disease. Now, science would have never achieved as much as it has without the possibility to communicate across the world and share our information. And the World Wide Web in particular was actually developed by scientists to do science and share information and data. This really highlights the importance of the internet for development and for progress. And if we want the world to globally develop and for information to be accessible everywhere so that people can study and learn and just communicate anywhere, then the internet really is essential. Elon Musk is here again tackling exactly this problem with his own Starlink project. Using his space program SpaceX, he's deploying a new state-of-the-art satellite network that can offer high-speed and low-latency internet to the entire world. In a recent study, it was found that around 4.6 billion or 59.5% of the global population has access to the internet. So that means that if we want to bring the rest of the world up to speed or bring them onto the internet, then we really need to do something. While the majority of the Western world is online and connected to the internet, the situation is very different in most of Africa and many places in Asia. Elon Musk's Starlink project is currently in the beta version, but last year it reached over 10,000 customers who are already using it. 
The concept is in some ways very simple. Using his own space program, SpaceX, Elon Musk plans to send more than 10,000 small satellites into space at an altitude of around 550 kilometers. And this is a lot closer to the Earth than traditional satellites. And so the proximity to the Earth and then the amount of satellites makes it possible for a really solid internet performance. One of the primary goals is to link rural areas to the internet, and currently it offers speeds from around 50 to 150 megabytes per second, and a latency of around 20 to 40 milliseconds. And this is of course not as fast as fiber optic internet connections, which can reach speeds of above one gigabyte per second and latencies below 10 milliseconds. But considering the fact that this is actually a wireless signal being transmitted via satellite link, this is actually a, quite a good performance and it even makes it, in principle at least, possible to play some online competitive games. The area of the Earth that is currently covered is rather limited as only a fraction of the projected amount of satellites have been sent into orbit. Last year the thousandth satellite was actually launched and in general the satellites are sent into space in batches of up to 60 satellites. And as the constellation of these satellites expand and more and more of the Earth gets covered, Eventually, nothing really stops you from connecting to the internet from anywhere on Earth. All you need is a subscription and the starter kit that costs $499, and it includes the satellite dish and other electronics to connect to the Starlink satellites. All right, so now I'd just like to give a quick thank you to Samsung for sponsoring this video with the new Samsung Galaxy A53 5G which is a very powerful phone with a five nanometer octa-core processor that makes this device super fast. And I don't really know how Samsung has done this because they've created this device at a way lower price point than their flagship phone, which is the S22 Ultra, which I also have here. They've really thought this device through and created something that has great value for money. And I really like the ability that it has to put in the extra storage via micro SD card. And personally, I just like this option way more than the fixed amount of storage that you usually get on phones nowadays because what this means is that with the micro SD card, you can essentially have infinite amount of storage. You could either just update or like buy a new SD card and you have a fresh one with fresh amount of storage, or you could actually take it out and transfer the information on that SD card to your computer while at the same time being able to fully utilize your actual device without having it be plugged into the computer, which I think is a really useful thing. It's pretty much a flagship phone with IP67 water resistance, 25 watt charging and a 120 hertz display. And also in typical Samsung fashion, they've made sure to equip this phone with a really high quality camera. I really don't know how they do it, but they've managed to create an incredible device at a really good price. So yeah, this device is just a really great way to achieve the Galaxy experience at an A-series price. So go check it out at samsung.com and experience the enhanced performance yourself. One of the most common types of devices that we use to connect to the internet is a smartphone. And as we all know, smartphones connected to the internet can do a lot of really cool things. In particular, we can fight malaria with the help of phones and the big data mining that they can provide. And this is something that can and is already saving thousands of lives around the world, but maybe in a way that you didn't expect. Malaria kills more than 400,000 people globally every year, and most of them are children. In Asia, the disease has become resistant to a lot of the anti-malarial drugs. And it's really just causing havoc, and software engineers and programmers have now found a way to battle malaria using smartphones. So the idea is essentially that if we can contain the outbreak or if we can guess where the outbreak will occur then we can minimize the impact of that outbreak which means that less people will be infected which means less people will die. Using anonymous phone data, medical data and other data it turns out that we can actually fight malaria quite effectively using this big data or data mining. With the help of integrated software solutions, we can use this data to monitor population movements. And then with the help of data from malaria outbreaks, we can detect outbreaks as they occur and then help contain them. These software solutions help us deploy life-saving resources in an effective way. And it's also possible to use data mining to make risk maps. And this really helps us take efficient preventative actions so that we can send insecticides or bed nets like mosquito nets to these places to protect the population before the outbreaks actually occur and where there will likely be an outbreak. And hopefully that way reduce the actual impact of those outbreaks. 
In the southern province of Zambia, these innovative solutions have contributed to an 85% decrease in malaria cases between 2014 and 2017. The number of malaria-related deaths have decreased even more with 92%, and this proves that we can indeed fight malaria effectively with our smartphones. And although all these three projects are very different from each other, they all have something in common, and that's that they're all trying to just make the world better by using computer science. And even though I think that's a little bit of a cliche about like, oh yeah, make the world a better place, I tried to find projects that I actually think are trying to do this and that are, I think are actually going to do this in some way. And so yeah, maybe this will motivate you to get started on your own project and actually make the world a better place. Uh, which I'm saying uh, sarcastically, but I don't mean to say it sarcastically. You should be doing that, but, uh, or you should do whatever you want. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you got excited about some of these things and if you have ideas of your own for things that could be done. Maybe you can't do it yourself. Maybe you'll find someone in the comments that is excited to help you out with it. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities with software development and things that we can do that a lot of people who don't know how to code can't really do. Uh, so yeah, I think it's useful to kind of take advantage of those opportunities. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.